We have uh, just uh, significantly improved our Hyper Lambda generator, which is our own proprietary uh, LLM that generates Hyper Lambda code. And um, in this video, I'm going to show you something kick ass cool. Here I have an interesting specification for a to-do system. Uh, before I explain everything it does, let me start the process by simply copying and pasting it into our AI expert system and then we can look at it. As you can see, it's creating a to-do uh, system complete with a database of with two tables. And then it's asking me to verify its decisions. I write go. It will now actually start implementing my specification. So <clears throat> the thing features uh, CRUD HTTP endpoints with drop level security, allowing users to only retrieve and update and delete their own items. Uh, in addition to that, it has a one-to-many relationship from items to type of items being work or professional or private stuff, personal stuff. Generate all endpoints. So now it's been creating uh, prompts for the Hyper Lambda generator, which you can see here for all CRUD endpoints, and asks me to acknowledge that these prompts are okay, at which point I say, yes, uh, generate all endpoints. Now it will invoke our Hyper Lambda generator, which is our own proprietary LLM built upon GPT 4.1 Mini by fine tuning it. And then uh, it is uh, saving Hyper Lambda files, generating the correct code. It's already created a database for me and inserted some example records, etc. So basically at the end of this process, I will have a complete functioning app backend for a to-do system with drop level security, doing some joints here and there, doing some authorization and authentication stuff, etc., etc. Let's wait until this process is done. Now it's inserting example records, as you can see. And now let's see uh, what it did. Okay, so your to-do system is now fully set up. So now let's go to create and hyper ID and look at the code that it produced. Here we find a to-do module that was created now. If I uh, open the items.get here, for instance, let me see, user, username. Let's see if we have some items and uh, it didn't have type name because it didn't this isn't our hyper lambda generator's fault it is actually gpd 4.1 that's passing in the wrong column yeah. names sometimes to the hyper lambda generator however one bug one bug complete web app api backend one bug so far Let's see what it does on the postcard. And this thing is joining items and it is applying rob level security and it is uh, applying uh, authorization and authentication requirements. Let's see what this guy does. Okay, title, description, type ID, uh, user, authorization requirements, mandatory items, getting the username, connecting, adding the, uh, argue the uh, columns, and then it is inserting the username. So let's see uh, how the world type ID one, ID four. If we now go to the get endpoint, we get how the world type ID one, which I just inserted through the API. Let's have a look at the uh, delete if, uh, or let's do put, which is the update guy. Okay, ID type description type ID. Mandatory ID, uh, row level security, applying uh, fields, and uh, username equal. Okay, so now if we provide ID for title, how they, right, and then just uh, invoke it, we go back to get now, it should have updated the last item to how the exclamation marks. And as you can see, it did. Let's try the delete endpoint, uh, ID for see if it works and go back to get and verify that the item is deleted and the item is deleted. We now have a complete uh, API for a to-do application with authorization requirement and authentication requirement. Let's try something more complex, right? Because this isn't the only specification I've got. I've got Forex system here too. So let's copy this guy. Now I need to emphasize the last time I, uh, I need to increase the uh, uh, LLM's um, 
max request token to 2500. Let's try again, refresh, and pass it in again. You see uh, the request was too long for the type to accept it. So I needed to increase the maximum request token size. So now it's creating only one uh, table. Okay, go. And uh, this table is an authentication and authorization. The, the thing about this system is that it allows users to register during registration um, a folder for their personal files is created on disk and an email is sent out that the user has to click on the link in the email to verify his or her email address. So this is a much more complex system than uh, the one we created, than the to-do system we, we created. However, let's look what it uh, is doing now. Okay, so now it's uh, creating the Forex module, it's creating the database and the schema. Now it's creating the auth folder and then the KYC folder. And here is the uh, prompt for the register uh, post uh, endpoint. And it looks like it succeeded. Uh, verify email. Mm. Then further down here, it has an authentication endpoint, which it writes, which returns a secure JWT token. Upload KYC. KYC is a Forex lingo thing, means know your client, and it's basically the ability to upload a passport or a driver's license to prove that you are who you claim you are. Right? You, you do this every time you open a new bank account with a new bank or something like that, or a trading account. Uh, KYC upload, done, acceptance, done. Uh, document list done download now let's go back to create and hyper id and have a look at the forex module here you can see this is a much more complex module because it first of all has two folders okay let's start with auth here is the register http endpoint it takes a username and an email and a password all are mandatory then it connects to this database type sqlite uh, creates a hash of the password and then creates this new user correctly with the hashed password. Then it creates uh, the user's files folder, which will be etc. slash user slash username. And then it starts creating the email, which contains a token here, which must match the email address plus the author secret of the Cloudlet. And then it's URL encoding the email and sending the email. Let's try it out. Username, Paul Durgai, Thomas at iNero.io, 2BERTY as password. There are no password restrictions here. Okay, so I have an SMTP configuration error, which I cannot fix. My SMTP configuration settings apparently is not correct. So I can't send the emails. But ignoring that, everything else basically works. Let's look at the verify email, which we can't really test, but we can verify that the code is correct. Token, token email, config. Here is creating a hash, crypto hash of the config plus email. Looks correct. If token equal, then it's updating the verified status of that particular column where the email is equal to the email. Let's have a look at authenticate. Username, password, mandatory, connecting, where username equal, if exists, and if, uh, okay. So it should have checked if uh, the user has verified the email or not, but that's a part of the prompting that is happening from GPT 4.1 and not our hyperland generator. This code is 100% perfect. So I created two apps now with some 300 lines of code in total using our Hyper Lambda generator, and we had one bug. And that wasn't even a semantic bug, it was actually a bug originating from GPT 4.1 uh, and not from our Hyper Lambda generator. So we basically have a SUTA, state of the art, AI, backend, generator, LLM. So basically, I am now at the point where I can guarantee you with 100% certainty that uh, long before the end of 2025, probably in a month or two, we will have 100% uh, 
perfectly working backend AI based code generator that actually generates code and deploys it, creates databases, uh, integrates with uh, third party APIs, sends emails, does whatever you can do with Magic. And of course, Magic is a complete uh, backend uh, software development uh, programming language, implying you can basically create any backend. Zero shop fronting from a specification that you paste in to a front end, which then breaks it down into individual Hyperlambda files and tasks and executes these uh, sequentially.